Welcome back to the Thalassic Focus channel. If you're new here, my name is Quentin, and today we're going to build a remotely operated underwater vehicle, also called a ROV. I'm interested in building my own ROV for the purpose of recording marine life without the need to scuba dive or snorkel. I hope to eventually build an ROV that can explore areas too deep for recreational scuba diving. But for now, we're going to start small by building a PVC pipe ROV for shallow water exploration. The main components of this ROV consist of the frame, the lights, two cameras, one for live feed viewing, and the other one is for recording. Then we have three thrusters, we have the tether, we have the power supply, and we have the controller. I chose to deploy the ROV at the mouth of Wailoa River near Suisun Fish Market. Unfortunately, I forgot to peel the plastic film off the lens of the action camera, so the text is visible on the underwater footage for these first trials. The ROV was too buoyant for the first trial, so I removed both foam noodles to see if that would solve the problem. This didn't work out either as it started sinking to the bottom. I decided to cut each foam noodle in half and reattach them to the frame, which seemed to solve the buoyancy problem. Here at One Kahakaha. This is a tide pool in Hilo. I'm also here with a couple of friends. Tonight I'm going to test the ROV and see how well it does at night. Go ahead and turn on the lights. I've also lengthened the tether here at the expense of the live camera. So let's see how well this thing does.
Although we were able to film a few marine creatures, this is when the ROV started having some problems. The first problem was that the ROV wouldn't descend, likely due to the fact that salt water is denser than the brackish water we first tested the ROV in near Suisans. I tried removing half of the foam left on the frame but this didn't work. I didn't want to remove all the foam as this could destabilize the ROV as it moves through the water. Another problem was that the ethernet cable would sink to the bottom and get caught on rocks. This means I had to go in and untangle the cable whenever the ROV got stuck. These are some problems that I'll need to address when building the next ROV. Overall this was a fun project and I learned a lot of new skills such as working with electronics, soldering, and cutting PVC pipe for the first time. If you would like to build your own ROV, I will link the resources that I used in the description of this video.